Hi, my name is Kevin Davis. I work for Murray City Fire. I am a paramedic firefighter and today we are going to review some basics of the Zoll monitor and some of the functionalities of the blood pressure system. Um, this is a common thing that us as firefighters typically don't do correctly because we've never been taught the correct way. Because there is a way that we are supposed to use these cuffs to maximize the results. Uh, this matters because if we are getting inaccurate readings on our blood pressures, even on any of our vitals, that affects our patient care. We want the highest quality of care for our uh, customers. So we're going to go over just some features on the monitor here. And then we'll go over the sizing of blood pressure cuffs. And we'll go over demonstrating putting it on the mannequin. And then we will go over a few extra features about the blood pressure system. So here on the monitor, power on. You're going to notice there's tons of fixed buttons within, within in the monitor. Um, this button right here, that's your home button. That's going to default you back to this screen wherever you're at. And this button up here silences your alarms. This is how you scroll through your settings with the enter button there. This button is a uh, snapshot button. Essentially what that does, if I press this at any time that I'm doing such like a four lead, it's going to record 12 seconds prior and 12 seconds after. And then it's going to print it out so that we can have a, a good reference of if we had some cardiac event that we wanted to show the doctor. Uh, down here is our non-invasive blood pressure button and the only function that does is it functions the blood pressure cuff. On the left side of the monitor here we have a row of buttons. These ones are kind of fixed but we can alternate between two different screens there and then each one of these has a different function obviously. Top one we can go through select what leads we want to view our four leads in or even if we have them on pads we can sh we can toggle to that. The next one's the 12 lead. We go into that and we can get a, a, a more in-depth picture of a cardiac activity. CO2 button. This one is for end tidal CO2. If we push it, it's going to turn on the end tidal sensor within the side here. There's a little window and this spout just underneath that it will actually act as kind of an exhaust to help pump out if there's any crap in there that we don't want in our reading. Um, moving on down the list, Rx. If we go into this, we can go through, we have specific to our department, uh, different medications that we are allowed to use and that we carry. Um, this allows us to timestamp when we use a medication, uh, when we print off a treatment summary, that's going to show on the treatment summary exactly when we administered that medication as long as we are time stamping it when we give it. Um, back out of that, we have the sync function. This button, you notice that sync comes up. This one's used for synchronized cardio version. This has to be pushed each time that we defibrillate with synchronized cardio version. And if we don't have it on, then we run the risk of causing more issues. This one here, we like to call it the forever printer. You push it, and it is going to continuously print until you push it again. All right, then what I really want to talk about is we're going to go over the blood pressure cuff system. So down here, we can toggle to it. We can push enter, and it'll pull up our screen here. Our screen is going to show us all these different values, all these different ranges of tolerances where an alarm is going to sound or an alarm is not going to sound. Uh, these ones are defaulted. They are set up by admin. We do have the ability to change it if we want to. Say if we're doing a lengthy transport, we can change it so that it's not alerting every time even though it is kind of a bad reading or something. Um, then, down here, 
we have non-invasive blood pressure bulb. This one's set to manual. So this one, we can set, we can click into it and we can change it to auto. And all that that feature is going to do is you noticed here, this little button lit up, it says five minutes. So every five minutes, this is going to recycle a blood pressure. And it'll keep doing that until we turn off the machine or we turn off that function. And if we want to change, the, the time intervals, we can just click into that and then we can scroll through. If we want to take one every minute, we can. And each time that functions, each time that cycles, it's going to timestamp it like we explained earlier. This last one here, or the second to last one, excuse me, smart cuff on or off is defaulted to on. What this feature is, is it helps obtain a more accurate blood pressure by using the either the four lead or the pulse ox in conjunction with the reading so that it can have a better or a more accurate decision of what is really a heartbeat or not. Um, so that one, if, if you have a patient where you are having a very hard time getting the blood pressure on, I like to go into this screen and I will actually turn that function off and sometimes it will assist you in getting a better reading on some of the difficult patients. Last thing here, it's called the turbo cuff and all that that does, you push that and it is going to cycle the blood pressure and then the second that it is completed, the cuff will deflate. Once it's deflated, it's going to cycle again. And it's going to do that over and over and over until you push stop or turn off the monitor. All right, then I think what we'll do now is we'll go over just kind of the different cuff sizes that we carry. So you notice there are several sizes, all different sizes. This one here. Um, so what a lot of people don't know, there's actually a right way to put this on. If you notice here, it says artery index marker. So these arrows are your reference point. If you notice on the outside and on the inside of the cuff, you have this line right here. So what this is meant is for when you are placing this on the arm, these arrows need to fall within those lines. And that's how you know that you have a properly sized cuff. If you are outside of those lines, you either need to go up or down depending on uh, where it falls. Um, so we're going to demonstrate putting one on on our mannequin here. So this mannequin probably looks like this might be the right size, so we'll see. Um, again, artery index marker. We want this to be on the center of the bicep because that is what Well Challen, the manufacturer, recommends is that we keep it on the center of the bicep for the most accurate reading. And then, as we tighten it, we are on the cusp there, so we might need to go up one. up a size and again line up your artery index marker with the bicep wrap that sucker around and then you notice our arrows right here so we are within our tolerance and now we can hook up our monitor and take a blood pressure and that's how we know that we are getting the most accurate reading possible is by making sure that these cuffs are actually sized to the proper uh, circumference. Uh, some of the things why this matters so much, if your cuff size is too large, the cuff will actually wrap around the arm and the air bladder within the cuff, because each of these cuffs has a little air bladder inside that's only a portion of the cuff. And if that 
cuff wraps all the way around and that bladder is going to sit on top of itself. When it inflates, it is going to actually cut off the blood supply in the arm a lot easier and that's going to give you a false low reading. So blood pressures will return a lot lower than they should. Um, that can be deceiving doing patient care. The other side of that, if it's too small, then it doesn't adequately cover the arm and it can't cut off the blood supply. And so it gives you a false high reading because it has a harder time cutting off the blood supply. Um, those are a few of the more important things that I like to teach all my guys that I'm working with because it helps a lot with getting accurate readings, improving our patient care. And that is all I have to share with you. So thank you.